Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, cats and dogs, and other farm animals, this is Rennie, and welcome to episode 15 of Omni Factory The Quest. Now, I know it's been a little while since I've had an Omni Factory episode, so you guys are getting a double length episode today as a treat. And I completed a bunch of quests because I went out and did a bunch of gathering to make sure that we have plenty of materials for this double length episode. So, let's go ahead and get cracking. We're going to go ahead and start in the beginning. Um, I've thought about doing the leadstone ja jack pack. Totally. That's totally what I'm doing. Um, I think I need sulfur dust. What I'm going to do. Okay. Well, I think I might have. Do I have any sulfur ore? Yes, no, yes, no, yes, no. Yes, yes, no. I do not. So, I'm going to mash on too many buttons. That quest is going to wait. Fuel catalyzers. Augment fuel catalyzer. Okay, a lot of wrought iron and a redstone conductance bar. Of course, three gold rods and four redstone. Well, fortunately for me, I just got done making a ton of redstone. Three two sets, I got eight. For the gold, we need six. And of course, for the wrought iron, that's probably going to be most of it left, in fact. I'm gonna go ahead and take that 32 and get it smelting in the diamond furnace, because we're probably going to need it. Just, oh, wait, I have 16 more. Okay, well, still, I'm still going to go ahead and throw 24 in there. Oops, that's 23. Just to make sure we build up plenty of a supply. And of course, for this quest, I'm going to need hammer and file. Of course, for the plates, I need eight of them since I'm making these. It's six gold rods, like so. I'm just go ahead and drop them in as before. <coughs> and then we get two redstone conductance coils. And then as I recall, I think that is the recipe. Except I've done something wrong. Nope, it's the other way around. I think it's backwards. Well, we just go ahead and do a quick switcheroonie for the fuel catalyzer. Oh. Hmm? Take a second one of those. So basically, this will improve the uh, fuel efficiency of our coal gadget. Go ahead and... Drop in those upgrades right there. Save fuel. Alright, we're gonna get batteries in the CEF next. Battery! Small battery hull is just two tin plates and one red alloy cable. Red alloy cable? Okay, do I have any of that in my function? Please? Oh wait, I already have battery hulls. Okay. Well, then, let's see. Probably wants me to make batteries later. Let's at least complete the quest with five of pennies. Wrenches galore. So we're gonna go ahead and make some wrenches now. Oops, we've built up a full stack of omni pennies. So I'm gonna go ahead and change those over into Omni Nickels. This is about 13 Omni Nickels. We're starting to get into some money now. Okay, we need a Yeta wrench and a Crescent Hammer. Iron, 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 and tin. Well, I guess we'll grab a tin ingot. Oh, here I was talking about how I made a bunch of materials and we're already through most of them. Jesus. There we go. There we go. There's the crescent hammer. And the Yeta or Yeta or however the hell it said wrench. Four iron rods, four iron plates, and a screwdriver. Screwdriver. Oh. Interesting thing to make it 
with. Okay, I need more iron. We definitely need that plate machine up and running as soon as we can. Because this is not the most efficient way to make plates, of course, but we will make do with what we have. Okay, rods, iron plates, and screw them. Iron gear. Oh, it's what goes with the iron. Three iron ingots. Erg. Yeah, look at how much iron will be. Jesus. Oops. All right. Go ahead and complete that quest for Omni Pennies. Or doubling. We don't have to do it yet. So yeah, or doubling we're going to not really focus on for the moment, and of course it's talking about spending the coins. Alrighty. So that gives us an extra 20 coins to be able to utilize later. Storage drawer control. Scanner module block, such stone, of course. That requires six coated circuit boards. Well, I have a lot of coated circuit boards, and I actually have a gold. So let's go ahead and get that out of here. For that, of course, we need wire cutter. I notice my wire cutters are starting to slow. Apologies if you hear my brother rummaging about in the background. Okay? Um, he's trying to make his back quit hurting, but if you can't hear him, well, okay. Either way, there's the scanner module. Now we just need stone, like smelted stone, of which fortunately we have plenty. I think I can just stick these together in my crafting grid. There we go. Scanner module block. We'll go in the tools with the scanner and store the rest of these too. And claim five more cents. Omni cents. Okay, I think the cows are just about full grown. I'm gonna go ahead and take the food that I have built up. I'm gonna bleed some cows and then deal with some cows. And grab my uh, ender. Because why not? I haven't used it yet. I want to use it. Okay. Yeah, so many cows. Okay. Of course, they're all right over here. And once that's done, all right, that gives us three more leather. And actually, I think that's the leather that we need to be able to complete the hang glide. Next. Because that will give us 13 leather. We need 12. So we'll go to grab the scaffolding component. So hey, another quest to mark. And we need sticks. Which I have. There we go. Right wing. We just flip over, get the left wing. And assemble the glider. Quest complete. Okay. At this point, I'm just trying to get the side, well, side quests out of the way before we make the jump into the next major part of our quest line, which will be 
making the uh, machinery. We're actually starting to get close to that. I'm going to go ahead and drop the batteries back. We don't need them at this particular juncture. Wood goes in there, metals in there, wood goes in materials, and of course, the, oh, I still need the steak. That's my food supply. Okay, storage drawer controller. That's a lot of primitive circuits, though. And it's also a block of diamond or emerald, which I don't think I have enough of either. Yeah. So we're going to go ahead and leave that aside as well, but get started on that. Now I'm going to go ahead and grab my function blocks and start setting up a wood table because tables will be very useful. We're going to set up one there, and that's going to be for my circuitry components. One point. That one will go there, and yes, I know it's sideways, but oh well. This will be the one we use to start making uh, machinery components, motors. And for that, we need two iron rods, one magnetic iron, four copper wire, and two tin cable. Got it. Whoops. Got to figure out. Okay, iron rod and four redstone. Gal. We definitely need to get a polarizer going soon. Okay. So for this, we require iron, copper, and tin. We'll also need the hammer to make plates. We'll need a file to make rods. We'll need a wire cutter for that. We'll need rubber sheets for the cabling. We will also need redstone. Okay, so this is the one we're going to encode stuff in. Now, for the moment, we're going to make the rods, which we need three, to make one motor. But, of course, we need to make two, so we're going to grab six. Now, for copper, we need four wires. For one motor but we need to make two so we're going to make eight and of course for tin we normally need two cables but we need two motors so four all right let's go ahead and shape the recipe correctly. And of course wrap the cable magnetize the two rods There we go. All right, now here's how you encode a recipe. You just start placing items. Notice how I'm not actually taking the items out of my inventory because I'm not actually putting the items on the work table. I'm just encoding the recipe. Now what you do to complete the recipe is you put the items in this inventory here. And then I'll go ahead and pull the item and that saved the recipe. Now, I'm not going to lock that recipe in because there's a better one later, but that is the motor recipe. And now, anytime I want that recipe, I can just come back, click on that, and it will pull up the recipe. I just put the items in and pull it out. The benefit of work tables right there. And that's the motor quest complete for five Omni Pennies. And that's opened up a whole mess of things. And we can go to pistons, conveyors, pumps, or the wire mill. Well, the wire mill is going to be huge. Of course, it requires four motors, two circuits, two tin cables, and a machine hull. So let's go to work. We are going to need a lot of things. We're going to need our code circuit board. We're going to need more resistors. Um, so we'll go ahead and encode the recipe for those, too. Um, which is right there. I have paper. Okay, I have paper for now. We're going to need more rubber. I'm going to go ahead and make some rubber sheets. I'm going to make four of them. I'm sure I'm going to need more. Okay, this is going to be the first big leap. Of course, for app ah, buttons. Alec, whoops. I need primitive circuits. 
We need wrought iron plates. We need resistors, vacuum tubes, coated circuit board, and red alloy cable. Of course, red alloy is what's going to be difficult to come by because we have to make it ourselves. Red alloy ingot is, of course, made from red alloy dust, which is copper plus four redstone. Now, I'm probably going to need a fair bit of red alloy to do So what I'm going to do, I'm going to go ahead and make 16 red alloy ingots. That ought to be a pretty good starting point for my current supply. Down. For that, of course, I need my mortar, which is probably going to break. So I'm going to grab some fresh stone. I'm going to use some of my wrought iron supply to make a stronger mortar. See how the durability of that is 256. Well, that's not going to last very long. Um, if we make an, a wrought iron mortar, your ability is 384. It's 50% higher. But we pull out the rest of the copper. Then it's just a matter of putting in the redstone. Gives us 16 red alloy dust. Go ahead and grab two coal and get that smelting while we continue to work on everything else. In order to make vacuum tube, of course, we need glass plate because we need to make glass tubes to fit the vacuum tube components in. I'm going to go ahead and make some more glass plate. And yes, I know it's called glass paint, but we usually just call it glass plate. That makes two. Of course, for each circuit, we need two, so we're going to need four. All right, and then the vacuum tube recipe is copper wire, paper, and glass tube. We are really starting to burn through materials here, so we'll see what we can get through on time as well as material consumption. Uh, we are starting to have a pretty busy episode. So, for each vacuum tube, we need three copper wire. We need four vacuum tubes, so we need a total of 12. This is why the wire mill is so important because it will allow us to make our wires so much more efficiently. Our wire cutter's about to break too, so. Yeah, there it goes, actually. So that now has to be replaced. Of course, it's three plates, bronze rods, bronze screw, hammer, file, and screwdriver. I don't have all of the, I need my screwdriver. And it's three plates, two rods, and a screw. And we're going to make wrought iron, because wrought iron tools are stronger, as I've just demonstrated. Okay, there's the file. Now, I made a mistake. We actually need one more tool in order to make the screw. We need a saw. Because how you make the screws is a little strange. Saw one of the rods in half. You don't want to take all of them. And then the two bolts you get out of it, you use a file and make a screw. So let's set up the recipe. It's that, three wrought iron plates, hammer, file, screwdriver, wrought iron wire cutter. Now we can cut the rest of the copper wire. Do it the right way, though. Okay, let's go encode the recipe in the work table. As before, not actually expending the items. And just telling it where to place them. Okay, that's that recipe encoded. Now we can store the items in the inventory, collect what we need, and now we're low on paper, as we're still going to need paper for resistors and such. Now let me check the resistor recipe, because that makes three of them. Hmm, okay. That should theoretically be enough resistors to be able to assemble. No, because, yeah, that would assemble two primitive circuits. Okay. So that would be enough with the one I already have. 
So to make a resistor, we're going to go through a little bit of the same thing. We're going to start off by making copper plates, turning it into copper wire. As I recall, we of course need old dust in the center, copper wire top and bottom. That's not it. What did I do wrong? Oh, it's the other way around. Plus, we need to encode this as a work table recipe. Okay. New recipe. Copper wire to the sides. Paper top and bottom. And coal dust in the middle. Encodes three resistors. Of course, we're going to go ahead and drop the materials in. There's the resistors. And now that recipe is encoded. All right. I think we're just about to what we need for the two primitive circuits. We need the coded circuit boards, which we already have, and of course, red out the table. And we need, I think, three, whoops. Uh, we need three red alloy cables. So we need six in total. I need two extra sheets of, whoops. Oh, this red alloy recipe. Red alloy wire. It's expensive. It's all get out. I think you can make the circuits with. No, you can. You only. You can only use red alloy cable. Yeah. Okay. So. There's no real way to get out of that one, although I think the uh, wire refinery will, of course, help the wire mill. Now we have the red alloy cable. We have four resistors. And we need two wrought iron plates. So we'll make those very quickly. Since this is another component, I'm going to go ahead and encode it in this table here. The circuit in the center. Rod iron plate on top, red alloy cables at the bottom, vacuum tubes along the side, resistors at the top, primitive circuit. Now let's go ahead and store all of the components that we've made. And an easy way to check if you've got a full recipe to make sure you've got enough components, 4, 8, 10, 16, and 18. We need to make 2, 9 times 2, 18. There we go. So, now we need the other two motors. And for that, we need six iron rods, four copper wires, and two tin cables. Hey! What the hell? What the hell are you doing in my house? Why are you attacking in the daytime, Ding Dong? Stupid spider. Okay, I am determined to finish this project today because I want to show you guys a finished project. There's that. All right, there are those. And make the tin cable. Right, copper wire. Um, file, please. And of course, two of those need to be magnetized. Polarizer would be very useful right about now. Go make the other two motors. As before, just drop it in there. Four, eight, ten, eighteen. We've got the items. Two electric. Of course, we need the machine hull, which is a machine casing. So we need 11, that's 22 wrought iron ingots. We don't quite have enough, we have 19. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn one more coal ingot worth of iron into wrought iron. 
course the display there went a little weird. But either way, there we go. We need two more tin cables. Now that raises a problem because it looks like we're just about out of sticky rope. Ouch. Might have to go to chop some leaves, although I do have some rubber saplings that we could plant, question mark. And do I have any bone meal? I have bone, and I make meal out of it. With a mortar, perhaps? Yeah, I can make bone meal. I'd make 12. I need to get a rubber tree grown and a tree tap. There's no such thing as a tree tap. What the hell? Mer. Let me see what the quest says here. Um. You'll want to transition to rubber. Well, how do you get rubber out of rubber tree? Do you just chop it down? Ah, uh, well, it's different in industrial craft too. My brother's up here saying, uh huh. But in Industrial Craft 2, you have to have a tree tap to get it out of the rubber tree. So I guess we'll find out what the hell's going on. Let's get, let's jump down to the surface. Um, oof, now we're at the surface. Okay, we'll go ahead and plant that rubber tree. Bone meal, it's to death. Okay. Now, is it just chopped down? Yeah, I guess it is in this case. And we get more rubber tree saplings out of the equation. So we're going to go ahead and plant several more. That way we can get a rubber supply. Okay, that's enough rubber trees for the moment. Oh, hey, we have some rice. And it actually comes out as rice this time, not like it does in Matt's Mega Tech Pack, I think it is, where it turns into cheese. Uh, okay, back up to home. We're actually starting to get quite a lot of stuff in the inventory. Okay, now we have enough rubber sapling, I think to make four more rubber sheets, or rubber sapling, rubber, uh, sticky resin, that's what it's called. Okay, four more rubber sheets. Now, of course, for the machine hull. Yeah. Well, that is a way to do it, okay. Rod iron plate. We're gonna start with the first eight, which we need a wrench for. So we're gonna go ahead and grab that tool. There's the machine casing. Now, whoops, we need to come back to the wire mill. Machine hull is, of course, tin cable. Oops, that time I want to go up there. Okay, there's the tin plates. Um, other side, make tin wire, because for some reason that's a shaped recipe. And tin cable. Put those in there, the three wrought iron on top, boom. There's the machine hull. We've got the two circuits to go around it. We've got the four motors. We just need two more tin cables. There's the tin plate. Of course, trim them into tin wire. Wrap them with the rubber sheets. You'll make tin cable. And now we can, at long last, assemble our first actual machine. And for all that trouble, we get five Omni pennies. But the benefits of the wire mill, the benefits of the wire mill cannot be understated. I'm going to go ahead and grab the conductive iron cable. And we're going to set that up. We're going to come down this way. All right, and the first machine, wire mill. There we go, ladies and gentlemen. We have made our first machine, and we will show it off in the next episode. But in the meantime, thank you guys so much for watching, and stay tuned for the outro. 
Hey everyone, Arinia here. Thanks so much for watching this latest video out of my channel, and thanks so much to these patrons who, among others, are helping make this content possible by donating at least $10 on my Patreon page. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't, leave a comment, tell us what we need to do better. If you liked it, still leave a comment. I'm always open to input. If you like the channel, subscribe, hit the notification bell, and join us on the Discord community, link in the description. If you want to support the channel, and I really hope you do, please, down in the description is a link to the Buy Me A Coffee page, which you can donate to for a one-time donation, or the Patreon page, which you can head on to to donate monthly and get perks. In the meantime, this is Irinia saying once again, thanks for watching, 